Audio Festival. What is a daydream? It's a goal, a desire, or an aspiration that a person envisions in their thoughts, or imagination and strives to achieve or fulfill in the future. Daydreams can reflect our hopes, ambitions, passions, and values. Many dream of traveling and exploring new places and cultures, but not everyone can make it happen. I grew up in a small village called Shellen, on the southern coast of Crimea. This place was surrounded by low mountains named Daraktash, and my friends and I often climbed them. When I was 10 to 12 years old, we built tree houses out of oak and beech trees, accompanied by the sounds of forest birds, as they fraternally bore the fragments of thyme and pine, weaving through the air like whispers of nature's poetry. The subtle dance of herbal notes and the resinous embrace of pine needles created an aromatic symphony, serenading the senses with the delicate harmony of earth's scented verses. We climbed as much as we could in the summertime. Mountains were an important part of my life. At the time, I could never dream and imagine that I would become a cinematographer and one day find myself in the famous Alps in Austria. Nearly two decades later, my dream of visiting the Alps became a reality. I graduated film studies in Kyiv, became independent and completed my university education. Soon after, I landed a job as a cameraman at local television channel. I managed to establish valuable connections with directors and producers. Gradually, I started receiving offers for international projects and I embarked on business trips, capturing documentaries. Life took on new hues and became more captivating. Our team received a commission for the next project, a series of films about monuments of the Second World War. The director began crafting the script, and we geared up for a new exciting chapter in our creative endeavors. And now our film crew is flying to Austria to capture a story that will change my life forever. At the time I was living in Kyiv, my friend Eugen, the director, came from Astana, the capital of Kazakhstan, and our editor Elena drove her car from Prague, ready to meet us at Vienna airport. Together we embarked on this journey, stopping for a night at the roadside hotel not far from Mount Johannesburg. The Austrian winter evening enveloped us with gold and mystery, and the majestic mountains, their peaks dusted with snow, stood as silent guardians. Early in the morning we gathered for breakfast. Eugen and Elena settled on the soft brown leather coach, ordered espresso and Sauvignon Blanc, and started discussing the script for the upcoming film. As for me, I headed to the buffet to fill my plate. The breakfast selection wasn't particularly diverse. Solitary, slightly dried tomatoes, a cheese platter, and the ever-present silent low-salt salmon that had graced the establishment's tables multiple times. The smell of fish raised suspicions, but I had hearty breakfast, ignoring my concerns. After all, I needed energy for a long day of shooting ahead. We set off for Mount Johannesburg, Austria, to visit an elderly family living at the very top. The snowy road proved to be a challenge, with picturesque winding serpentines greeting us with ice. But the destination was more important than fear. So we pressed on. Finally, we arrived at the only house within a radius of 70 kilometers. I got out of the car 
set up the camera, connected the sound recording device and began shooting. We were warmly welcomed by a friendly old man, Felix, who invited us inside. I felt a strange discomfort and a pain in my stomach, but I continued working. The atmosphere of the house distracted me from my discomfort and filled me with positive emotions. The living room was cozy, with the sound of crackling fire making the interior even more inviting. The comforting warmth of the woody scent imbued with the earthy wisdom intertwined with the sweet, spicy allure of cinnamon, like a duet waltzing through the senses. Family portraits adorned the walls, offering glimpses into the lives of the people who lived here. The Austrian family offered lunch for us. The director, as always, took care of me and asked the hosts if dish contained pork, as I am a Muslim. The old man exclaimed with surprise, Wow, I've never seen a living Muslim before. <laughs> we laughed and indulged in the delightful goulash. Tender beef pieces, bathed in the velvety, aromatic sauce, enveloped our taste receptors, evoking memories of home. The deep brown and red hues hinted at a blend of spices, while the rising steam carried whispers of red pepper and cumin seeds. It became a true journey through the flavors of a culinary masterpiece. After lunch we began to film the interview. Felix told us a story about Second World War, when he was a child. In the sky above their home there was an aerial battle between French and German planes. A French plane crashed directly into the yard. At the time their garden helper was working in the garden and unfortunately he was hit and died from his injuries. Over time, the storyteller and his father erected a memorial from the plane's propeller blade for the fallen gardener and the French pilot. Despite my decline in energy, I persisted in shooting. The pain intensified and every frame seemed like an eternity. After recording the video with old man, we went outside. I flew my drone into the sky to capture the incredible beauty and film the memorial from the bird's eye view. My fingers trembled from the cold and my internal state. The magnificent alpine landscapes blended with my reality. I stood in the courtyard with the quadcopter controller in my hand and almost lost consciousness. A family friend rushed to me with medicine, which as it turned out contained alcohol. Religious considerations initially made me hesitate, but life was more important. Seeing my condition, director Eugene realized it was time to go to the hospital. They loaded me into the car and we raced down the mountain. I felt like that French pilot, fighting to the end, fulfilling his duty and ignoring the threat to his life. Along the way, I asked Eugene to tell my mother that I love her. I thought those were my last moments. My body trembled and I endured excruciation pain. As evening fell, the route became even icier, and our editor raced downhill at full speed. Every turn seemed to be the last. It can't get worse than this, I thought. At that moment, a young deer darted across the road. Our car probably scared him. The startled phone slipped and fell right in the middle of the roadway. Elena had to turn sharply so that the poor fellow did not fall under the wheels. The car lost control and we were veering toward the edge of a cliff. I clenched my fists and prepared to the worst. By some miracle, the car was stopped just a meter before the edge. It took time to realize how dangerous the situation was. We came to senses and continued on our way. Finally, we arrived at the hospital. They placed me in the wheelchair. Eugene took charge, presenting my documents, passport and insurance. For the first time in my life, I had purchased medical insurance and it came in handy. After completing the paperwork, they led me to a room 
where they started an IV and gave me medication. A young and friendly doctor conversed with me in English. In the morning, I felt significantly better. The doctor checked my condition, prescribed medications for a few days, and said that I could be discharged from the hospital. My friends had stayed in the lobby all night. When I came out to them, Elena exclaimed, Thanks God, you are alive! We hugged and walked to the car. On the way to the next hotel, we discussed our adventures. And I realized that life is wonderful. And this story was just the beginning. I am grateful to my friends, who risked their lives to save mine, and to the Austrian doctors who gave me back a life that seemed lost in that winter moment in the Alps in 2018. The Soundseekers Audio Festival 2024 is funded by the Arts Council of Ireland, the Centre for the Integration of Research, Teaching and Learning at University College Cork, and the National Forum for the Enhancement of Teaching and Learning in Higher Education. All music used in the production of these programmes are from open-sourced artists. Go to www.thesoundseekers.com for individual artist credits.